welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 104. This episode is Brandon Wynerdy, who is the host of Talking Bay 94, one of my all-time favorite Star Wars podcasts. And, uh, well, you're going to hear me say that a lot in this episode. <laughs> uh, I'm such a big fan of his, and uh, it was great to finally have him on. And uh, we talked about our mutual love of movies, um, his favorite horror movie, Working for Fangoria. We talk about how he was working in marketing and then how that led to the beginning of Talking Bay 94. Uh, we talk a lot about inside podcasting here, different tips, things that we've learned along the way. Uh, we talk about our white whales for our shows, our like dream guests. He tells me his podcast setup, what equipment he uses, um, what software he uses to record. If you're a podcaster, um, I, I recommend this episode. Actually, it was pretty neat to kind of get behind the scenes of a show that is about things that are behind the scenes. Uh, it was awesome. Brandon's awesome. This was just great. Highly, highly recommend Talking Bay 94. Um, if you like Star Wars, if you like behind the scenes stuff, it is the best show out there. Uh, as is Brandon. He's one of the best hosts there is. So let's just get right to it. Please enjoy the interesting podcast episode number 104 with Brandon Wynerdy. Theme song time. <laughs> Practical, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. You're, so you're in Central Time. So where are you based out of? I am based in Dallas, Texas. So. Oh, okay. That's a, yeah, I mean, that's a big city. It's a big city. Not a lot going on, but a big city. Yeah, a lot of traffic. A lot of traffic. Actually, what's lucky with work, I literally just take a back road all the way down, get to work in nine minutes, so I don't have to touch much traffic anymore, which is Dude, great. Dude, there you go. I know. Working out. I've driven through Dallas once, and I was like, I think that's enough. <laughs> yep. I don't think you missed much, but, you know, it's a good city. So. Yeah, exactly. Dallas, Houston, same thing. Lots of traffic. Lots of traffic. Yeah. Not a fan. Not a fan of traffic. <laughs> I'm in Florida, and where I'm at in Naples, it's uh, the average age is like 65. So um, you just bring the average down a little bit. That's good. Yeah, I mean, I try. Um, but right. They cannot drive. <laughs> oh no so it's a lot of it's very seasonal as well so we have like from november to easter it's just uh -huh. packed here because we call them snowbirds all the people that come from north down here oh, for the winter yeah. yeah and good lord the traffic is like five times worse and they can't really see above the dash sometimes you're like okay here we just yeah, good all right let's keep, keep on going <laughs> keep on going Love it. oh man are you from dallas I'm from Dallas, born and raised in Dallas. I went to school um, at A and M, so three hours outside of Dallas, and I then I moved back. So. There you go. You must like it. I guess. I guess. I didn't realize I was that much of a homer, but that that's what I'm uh, that's what I'm doing. So that's all right. There's worse places to be. I've heard. <laughs> I, I've heard as well. Yeah. <laughs> right on. So you're. I think you're like me. I've been following you on all the social medias for quite some time. Little in person, but that's different. Uh, right. We both seem to like movies quite a bit. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Was it as a kid? Is that when you started the the sort of interest in the entertainment industry side of it? Uh, yeah, man. It was always uh, from the very beginning almost my focus towards behind the scenes, right? And like how movies were made. Same. Um, really, and honestly, I, I was explaining to someone a little bit earlier because someone was asking me like if I liked horror movies growing up. Uh, sure. based on what I'm doing now. And what I explained was my my parents, especially my mom, were very uh, religious and like very uh, controlling what I would watch and what I wouldn't watch. And so sure. the way I got around that, if it, you call it getting around it, is I read about the movies and I read about how the movies were made, um, whether it was a horror movie or a sci-fi movie or, you know, the stop motion. And so that was really what I, what I started to do and what I started to like to read and learn about and it kind of just uh, snowballed from there where the movies that I was enjoying were the ones that required a little bit more, you know, practical effects and, and work behind the scenes. So. Sure. 
That's pretty neat that you got <laughs> you got <laughs> horror through behind the scenes stuff. That's cool. Yeah, uh, and also just you know, I guess spiting my parents a little bit, so yeah. it works out. Uh, <laughs> in a way. That's yeah. right. Little rebellion never hurt anybody. That's right. right. The, that's the that's the message of Star Wars right there. So. That's right. You were always in, and there's there's yeah. a lot of overlap as well. Rick Baker, you know. Yep. Oh yeah. Big time, big time horror icon as well as obviously yep. Cantina. It's yeah, a, and then you got yeah Chris Lee now, and you, of course yeah. you have Peter Cushing, right? You have these incredible like stalwarts of of the of the horror you know genre. And Lucas obviously grew up with all of that as well. It's just serials, um, and it's kind of amazing to see it, it progress. I agree. My wife, her favorite genre is horror. She oh, loves, yeah? loves horror movies. So we get a we get a good amount of it. We get a good, good. amount of it around here. Yeah. Do you have Do you have a favorite horror movie? My favorite horror movie of all time of all time is is always been The Shining. Um, oh, nice. That's a good one. It's a. That's a. Yeah. It's it's a great one. It's yeah. it's. <laughs> it's I. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now, Stanley Kubrick. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so I always say I always say The Shining, and then one of the ones that really has a lot of overlap for me, both with, you know, uh, sci-fi and then, and then horror obviously is alien. Ooh, and so, nice. so both of those for me, I've always kind of been the, the shining examples of what horror can be, but ah. also, um, what kind of the genre can do. So. Gotcha. Okay. I've seen the shining a lot because of my yeah. wife and, uh, <laughs> weird timing. I literally had a conversation this afternoon in reference to the shine. Okay. That's very strange. We were talking. Okay, you know. We were talking about uh, like how actors prepare and like weird behind the scenes stuff. Oh yeah. And it was the Jack Nicholson warming up. Oh, the, it's so cool, right? Yeah, he's, he's just like murder, murder, kill, and I was like, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, great. Yeah, uh-huh. I was like moving lights around. I was like, sorry, excuse me, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Preparing for the most iconic scene of all time. Yeah. I know. I didn't know that it was a reference to the Johnny Carson show. Yeah. Yep. Right. Yes. And like we, I mean, I'm young, right? I would have no idea. Right. Grow up same. That, so. so yeah, man, uh, some crazy stuff. A little bit, a little bit. Can you imagine being on that set? <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's a couple really good uh, documentaries about it. Uh, one that Kubrick's daughter did, uh, oh, and then cool. uh, and then there's a book coming out that Rensler is doing. I'm pretty sure. Really? I think that's been announced. Yes. I think he has, uh, said it in public. So that means I can say it, but he is <laughs> doing, uh, he's doing a shining, uh, book, which is awesome. Cause he just did alien, which was awesome. Right. And they played, uh, planet of the apes, which was awesome. And really he's never written a not awesome book. So, <laughs> so far so good. Yeah. I'm looking at six of his books right here. So, um, all good. Dude. That'd be nuts. And Kubrick is, you know, the like take after take after take after take after right. take after take. Nuts. So that's some good stuff there. Yeah. I bet. Can you imagine doing that a ton of times? Like that. I cannot time? imagine doing that. I would be very, very upset. Whew. Yeah. <laughs> after like ten, you're like, I'm spent, man. I'm. Really... I, got... <laughs> I got nothing else. <laughs> like uh uh oh my I'm, I'm blanking your name because I'm awful. The the main girl, Duval. Shelly Duvall? Shelly Duvall, yeah. Yes. Her scene of, like, screaming while the axe is coming through the door over and over and over. I know. Whew. Man. That reminds yeah, me of she did not have the most fun on – I was going to say, she didn't have the most fun on that set. That's all I'll yeah. say. But. Yeah. It's like I remember hearing about Winona Ryder in the first season of Stranger Things. Mm-hmm. She she said, like, by episode five or six, she was just out of tears. She's like, oh. I, I didn't have anything else. So she's like, we were yeah. trying all kinds of stuff, putting a fan in my face and, like – Whatever they can do. Yeah. Oh, man. Wild stuff. Wild stuff. Big time. Are you excited for Dr. Sleep? Dude, I'm pumped. And uh, not only because it's Ewan McGregor, right? That's awesome. For real. Uh, but my whole thing now, especially as it's like people are not scared to adapt Stephen King stories anymore. Sure. And it's like the weirder it gets, the better, right? And Dr. Sleep, uh, I don't know if you've read the book, is a very weird book. Really? Uh, and so I'm excited to see like what – because it is um, – markedly different than than the shining there i mean spoiler alert sort of like there's kind of like weird vampire kind of things or something I don't know, it's like a real, yeah so um sweet so it's it's very different than the shining and it's what's going to be interesting about this adaptation the reason i'm excited as you know the shining is one of my favorite movies of all time sure and then stephen king's one of my favorite authors of all time but of course stephen king hated the shining movie right he he right. says it's the worst adaptation of his work um 
But what's interesting to me is that uh, twofold, Stephen King has given his blessing to this movie and was involved in making this movie. Right. And uh, it thinks it's really great. But in the trailers, you know, it's Ewan McGregor uh, really uh, working through all of the themes and the sim- symbology from that movie, right? Not from the book, but the carpet and the door and everything is from the movie, not necessarily from the book. Right. Um, and so it's, it's interesting. I, I, I'm very curious how Stephen King has kind of justified that. And I've heard a couple of things. Uh, the, uh, Mike Flanagan has given a couple of reasonings. And, Sweet. Um, We'll Love see. That. So that's that's kind of why I'm excited. Um, but we'll see what happens. Sure, sure. It looks good. It looks good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you see uh, the new It? I did see the new It. Pretty crazy, huh? Yeah, pretty crazy. I, the first uh, It Chapter 1, I guess what it's called now, it was, was so great, I think. Like, it really caught me by surprise. And it was really during that whole Stranger Things heyday, right? It just was pretty much another episode of Stranger Things with, sure. like, a little bit more work. Um, and then I think I missed the kids in this one, right? I think the actors were casted incredibly. The adults were cast uncannily. It was incredible. Uh, but I think I missed the, the the scenes that really stood out to me were the ones with the kids, like in the clubhouse. And, and, um, so I think that's just kind of where my soft spot was. But That's fair. Those kids are so good. It's They're so good. All of them are so good. Yeah. yeah. The caliber of child actor that we have nowadays, which they've been good before, but now it's like, mm-hmm. man. Like yeah. the kid from, uh, I'm blanking the actor's name, but the one that is in Shazam as well. Um, uh, cool. You know, oh, you know, yeah. You know what I'm talking about. The, yeah. guy, the one I finally that, saw it, yeah. The gazebos. I know, he's the, he's the, uh, he's the, uh, Eddie. The, the brother in, in Shazam, right? He's like the yes. friend. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. That kid's amazing. Yes, and he was, uh, uh, spoiler alert for Shazam, but uh, Adam Brody, right? He's Adam yes. Brody and Shazam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, so good. Yes, that was a great movie. I really, because I, I waited until VOD to watch Shazam, Same. and I, I sat down here and I watched it, and I was like, oh, that was fun. Like, I don't know, like, I'm very lenient when it comes to superhero movies. Like, I, I, I still think it's super cool to see the stuff that I was reading as a kid, like, on the big screen, so I give yeah. it a lot of leniency no matter what, and I, I really enjoyed Shazam. I thought it was fun. I like Zach Levi. Same. I would be a horrible movie critic because I'm like, you know what? This is not bad. All right, I like this. Or if yes. like I didn't like the story, I'm like, that visual effect was really good though. Exactly. You have to find you have to find the thing that uh, that sticks out to you and just like ride that all the way. Especially yeah, especially yeah. as a movie critic. And also, I'm terrible with words. <laughs> so it'll be, like, yeah. it'll be like, what do you think of it? I dug it. It was pretty good. Yeah. I liked it a lot. That's rad. <laughs> yeah. That's it. That's all you need to know. Why'd you like it? It was cool. <laughs> That's all you need. <laughs> That's it. Oh man! So when did you decide to like go into the entertainment industry? Like, because I know you've done a lot of marketing and stuff like that as well. Okay. Yeah. When did you uh, so go into I would, the business of it. Yeah, I, uh, relatively recently, really. I, uh, I I started in marketing professionally. I was doing a lot of uh, sports marketing initially. I, I worked at oh, AM. Yeah, and I uh, did the marketing for football and basketball and. I had a lot of on-camera, like, emceeing and stuff like that for everybody. Really? Um, yeah. Uh, and then I uh, – it, it was interesting. Yeah? <laughs> uh, it was a lot of for, – for basketball, it was me uh, doing a lot of eating on camera in front of big crowds, right? Like, oh, this is special for the day <laughs> at the basketball game and me, like, eating a sandwich in front of, you know, 10,000 people. Uh, <laughs> there you go. But it, was, uh, it was fun. Yeah. And so then – but when I, when I left A&M, I went into social media – and did some smaller clients and, and kind of worked my way up and was ending up. Uh, I was doing the social media for Metro PCS, Metro IT Mobile. Um, oh, sweet. And doing all of their sports sponsorships, all of their UFC, all of, all of that stuff. And, and in, my, in my spare time, I was, uh, I was running my own website um, with, a, with a buddy of mine who I met with at one of my ad agencies. And, and we were doing kind of what we were talking about, like movie critics. And we would go to conventions and do reports and we would write for different publications. Uh, and that's kind of where Talking Bay spun out of. And uh, and then I really just kind of put myself out there with a couple uh, things. And I uh, saw that Fangoria had been acquired by a Dallas-based production company. And so I kind of reached out and I said, hey, um, I would love to to cover this or to write about this or to work with you in any way. Uh, and then a few months later, I got an email from the CEO. And I'm like, come on in, let's, let's talk. And so... Uh, from there, it's kind of been a whirlwind of, of now being on the other side of things and, and uh, really kind of getting to see how the sausage is made, but also uh, market that sausage. So it's been, it's been a lot of fun. 
Dude, it's so yeah. funny that you wouldn't think that like something like sports marketing would come in handy in yeah. that sort of arena, you know? Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Well, it, yeah, it really works out, especially sports marketing and entertainment marketing are, are very similar in the sense that it's always on, right? It's always, sure. um, it's a 24-7 kind of thing, but also what sports marketing taught me, which has really been the most important thing, has been work ethic, right? Where sports marketing, I was working 50 hours a week, 60 hours a week in the office. Sure. But then your evenings and your, your weekends are when the games are, right? When the events are. And so you're still working, you know, on a Tuesday evening and on a Saturday night, right? And so um, and so that really has bled over into what it takes to, to work in entertainment um, and to really understand what social media means in a professional sense. And uh, it's been really interesting kind of seeing that dichotomy, so... Sure. It definitely comes in handy. So especially the yeah. world that we're living in, it's so social media oriented. Oh, like yeah. If you know how to ride those waves, it uh, it helps a lot. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. So you were kind of doing like hosting stuff before you are even into podcasting. Yeah, man. I, it's always been kind of uh, something that I, I fell into easily, uh, just where I could, you know, either see things pretty easily or host things like events at school. Um, and that kind of turned into when we were doing this website stuff, you can go through the, the website and it's pretty much proto Talking Bay 94. It's me talking to comic book creators and, uh, and Star Wars actors and a bunch of other things and doing kind of long form interviews with them. And I would do it for conventions here in Dallas or do the post Q and A's after screenings or, at, you know, comic cons or whatever it was. And then I was just like, we should just record this <laughs> and I can, uh, you know, uh, turn these out. And so it really, uh, it, it grew very, very quickly. Uh, cause talking about 94 started as me doing video interviews at conventions, uh, when they weren't busy at their table and I would just go up to them like, Hey, can I talk to you for five minutes? And I would just transcribe those interviews. Dude. And then I was like, let's, let's put this into audio and let's see what, what happens. So, wow. Yeah. There you go. It's like you were already doing it before. You're like, how can I repackage this? And then put <laughs> right. it on- the ultimate 2019 content strategy is what can I do to then put on 15 different platforms? Yeah. So, yeah. That's right. It's like, what? how can I do something that I'm already doing and make it go farther? Which yep. is smart. It's how these things work. Yeah, I exactly. So, you know, obviously I'm a massive fan of Talking Bay 94 because you all the time. Sure. I, <laughs> I always describe Talking Bay 94. I was like, it's kind of like my show, except it's only, it's about Star Wars specifically. It's way more professional and has a much better host. So check would, out Talking Bay 94. <laughs> I, would, I, would, I would agree with one of those three things, which is it's just about Star Wars. Everything else I disagree with. Uh, but yeah, man, it's a, it's a trip. And it also makes it easier for me to just be like, nope, I'm only going to talk to these people. Uh, but then I kind of bend, bend my rules a little bit. Like I did that Indiana Jones episode because I couldn't pass That's up awesome. talking to Belloc. Right? Yeah, so, and then I have a... Uh, I really, really want to do Lord of the Rings Ooh. specifically, uh, and I have a great name that I, I'll tell you after after the episode because it, it literally it literally is uh, the only reason the podcast. But then again, it's like I can't like say no to talking to Sean Astin or you know uh, you know what I mean. Like there's no reason to say no. I might as well just like put it as a bonus episode on Talking Bay and. 80% of Star Wars fans also care about Lord of the Rings or Indiana. You know what I mean? So Absolutely. It's so almost a perfect I'll, circle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would hope. I yeah. would hope people would have good enough taste. So, uh, but yeah, man, it's been it's been a lot of fun. It's been really, really cool. It's so good. And you know what you do better than definitely myself, but probably everyone else? You do okay. <laughs> yeah. what I call micro-interviews. Okay. You're so good at like you can put out like a 15 minute episode me i was like i can't do anything yeah. under an hour <laughs> right. and you're, you're it's, it's like a reporter like you know yeah. what you're, that's why i say it's like it's a definite more professional version because me i'm like so like i did a show today where we talked about cheese for the first 15 minutes and i was like yeah, <laughs> that's my show man <laughs> you know yeah, that's good that's why people listen though i mean like that like with me i i i just know what i want to get answered right and that's it like I, I really just cut myself out of, of the podcast you'll listen to a talking about 94 episode you'll, you'll hear me for maybe a minute of the 50 <laughs> minutes or, sure because uh, i just cut myself out completely but then with with your show especially it's like oh no i want to like hear like the goofy banter and like kind of figuring out who these people are and like, you bring out the personality side of things um 
so much better. And so that's kind of, it's, it's just, it's the same kind of show, but focusing on two different aspects. So that's I love it. I love your show. It's, it's, <laughs> it's so good. It's like, I listen to your show and I'm like, man, okay. Okay. Cause your questions are so good. And the format that you have is like, but like listening to an episode, I'm getting what I would want to get out of it. You know what I mean? So like I have this one, I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. I want to learn about these things. I go, I listen to your show. I right. learned about those things. <laughs> my show it's like well you're gonna find out a lot of things that you did not know and that oh. you for sure didn't want to know <laughs> just gonna see what no, happens I love, <laughs> once i really love of your show and this is just gonna turn to people can just skip the next like 10 minutes but just like <laughs> just like loving each other's shows yeah. what i love about your show is the ones that are the people in the star wars community right and like i'm never gonna hear an hour and a half anywhere else of uh uh, who does a Star Wars comic, uh, Obes Kenobes, or oh, you know what yeah, I mean? Like, Jim. Yes, I'm never going to hear that, right? And it's so cool, like, hearing, like, their stories and, like, what what gets them going and, like, that they're funny on uh, Twitter and in real life. You know what I mean? And so I think there's just that whole side of things and showing showcasing the personality of people is so, so cool. Yeah, I just try. It's, it's the easy <laughs> one. <laughs> That's it. That's all you can do. That's it. It's true. It's true. I always tell people that, like, it's there's so much work involved in podcasting like, that's why every time you post a show, I'm like, yep, okay, like, respect. Because I know right. exactly, like, we've had a few overlap guests. Yeah. And I'm like, yep, I know exactly everything that went into this episode. <laughs> <laughs> how, how long it took to coordinate it. And yeah, it's some of them, like, we have one that's in common that uh, it took me, like, uh, literally, it was the first person I ever reached out to. We talked about him at Celebration. Yeah. It was the first person I ever reached out to, and then it took a year and a half for me to finally get him. And then when it came out, I was like, yeah, okay, I'm done. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, that's Same. Uh, oh, dude, I've had so many. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, man. Uh, it's, um, it's, it's a lot of work, and I think uh, that's every podcast, especially the Star Wars ones and the, the ones that are interview-focused, I really have just a, a higher appreciation for where I know how much time it takes to, to reach out to guests and to coordinate all of that stuff and then to record it and then to edit it, right? Like, uh -huh. you're doing hour and a half shows. Like, that takes a while to put together after all of it. You know what I mean? Like, oh, it's yeah. not... So, um, it's just, uh, it's interesting, and I'm glad that I'm able to express my Star Wars fandom in this way. I've never, you know, I've always been a huge Star Wars fan, obviously, but it's always been something a little more private or something I only share with two or three friends, and so it's been really nice not only doing the show, but then, like, you'll see me on Twitter just, like, going off because I've never really had, like, a platform just to be, like, dumb about Star Wars before, you know? So, oh yeah, uh, I really, I really have uh, have gotten a lot out of, out of this whole experience. Same. It's so cool. And, like, the, the, yeah. the idea, like, because that's another thing. I'm just going to keep, I had you on because I think your show is amazing and I'm just going to tell you it a hundred times. But, hey. Okay. You, <laughs> really <laughs> building up my confidence. This is great. Yeah, exactly. Like you, you have a guest centric show as well, which right. is so much harder <laughs> when you're just scheduling alone. Podcasting is just I'm, scheduling. That's yeah, all it is. That's all it is. That's all, that's all this is. Guest, guest centric shows, especially, right? It's just like, cause I'm not going to just sit there and talk. And, uh, and that's really like this week. I don't have an, uh, an episode because you know, I didn't, I couldn't get someone in time for Wednesday. Same. Right. So it's like, so I'm like, okay, like. You know, that's it. Like, I, I, I've learned to not beat myself up, right? I've tried to be regular for the past, you know, year, year and a half, or whatever it's been. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I take a couple months off just, just to get things back in the groove of things and get things stockpiled. Because otherwise, I'm just, you know, running up against the gun, trying to, trying to schedule stuff and coordinate schedules with people. Like, a guy I'm interviewing on Friday lives in... Spain, right? So I'm waking up at 5 a.m. to interview. You know what I mean? Like, uh, yep. <laughs> it's tough stuff. So, uh, so it'll be good though. But um, it's a it's a really cool, interesting community that I'm I'm really glad that I was able to kind of jump head first into. Yeah, game recognizes game, my friend. <laughs> yeah, there we go. There we go. I did I did the same thing because when you first start out, you're like consistency is key. Right, uh, but which, you know is, what? which is completely true. Completely true for the first parts of your podcast. You gotta just be like every week for a while, and then yeah. there's like and then you'll be fine. Uh, you know exactly. Once you know if, if like three people are listening at least, <laughs> yeah. and you're like okay, here's the deal because you'll stress. That's a that's something that I think a lot of people who are starting podcasts or whatever are in it. Definitely don't like stress yourself out over stuff like that because it's not gonna make a better product. And nobody's yep. going to know you're stressing out. So you're not even, like, getting anything out of it. You know what I mean? So yeah. as long as you're putting I, out good stuff. 
as long as you're and as long as you're having fun, right? I think the yeah. the cause every so often, like I would got, I would get to a point where I'm like, you know what? Like I'm just like dressed out and like I'm worried that I'm not gonna have an episode out this week, and I had to kind of take a step back and be like, you know, I'm, I'm interviewing people that I I wanted to talk to, and I'm having a good time on Twitter and with these you know new community that I've I've kind of put myself into, and that's it. Like if I don't have an episode out for two weeks, like I'm not. Not gonna, you know, get fired from Star Wars. Twitter. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you have to, <laughs> right. you have to take a step back and, and realize like you're doing it for fun, right? Otherwise, you know, until you, you know, I'm not getting paid. Right? I, don't exactly. know, I don't know how many Star Wars podcasters are, right? Like, for real, uh, you just gotta do it for fun and do it because you love Star Wars and you love talking to people and you love providing a small, small, small amount of value to somebody. So, absolutely, and that's another thing you do very well. It comes through that you are genuinely interested and excited about the things and people you're talking to. I appreciate it because it is it is like I, I try to cause people someone asked me this weekend like who who's been the biggest name on your show right and I was trying to I was like oh like and like I was trying to explain like how big of a deal these guys were but to people that like just like the Star Wars movies and have watched them a few times like they would have no idea right like who Richard Edlund is or Harrison Ellenshaw right or Paul yeah. Hirsch right <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm like oh like, I don't know like you won the Academy Award like five times you know what I mean like no one oh, no dude. one really knows and so uh, it's just because I want to talk to them and because I, I've admired them for so long and I've read their names so many times in so many books and um, and it's been just super, super rewarding for me. So That's so funny you say that. So my wife is like that. She she likes Star Wars. She watches all the yep. movies. She supports my obsession. She yep. doesn't know anything behind the scenes. And like <laughs> she knows a lot about the lore now just because I never stopped talking about it. Right. <laughs> And uh, but it's so funny because we just went to San Francisco last week. Oh yeah! And like so, we went to ILM, we went to Skywalker Ranch, and all this stuff. Yeah. And like oh my god, these people, blah blah blah. And Monique's yeah. like, this is beautiful, and she loves movies. Like right. we, we, that's what we do in our spare time. We just watch movies all the time. Yeah, yeah. And so she is loving and appreciating all the movie stuff. But I'm like, this is a matte painting from Hook, and she's like, oh, <laughs> Hook is great. And she's like, no, this was this was drawn by this, and this person did that. That's Todd Vaziri right. walking by. Yeah. She's like, oh, that's cool. great. That's so it. it's so funny that I'm like, yeah, you know, Hal Hickel, he won the Oscar for Pirates too. He's been here since the beginning. She's like, yeah. I know Hal, yeah, he's our friend. I was like, yes, but no, you don't know who he is. <laughs> Davy Jones, yeah. CGI genius. Exactly. Yeah, he did that. <laughs> no, I agree, man. It's well, like I I'm proud. My girlfriend um knows who Ralph McCory is now. I there was you like, go. Hey, there we go. Well, also because I have because my, my big collecting focus uh, like I really don't buy that many action figures or any, but I just pretty much if there's an officially licensed like McCory something, I'll just buy it, right? Sorry. Like the the mini bus and the action figures they made a few years ago, and yeah. and so she's just very aware of who Ralph McCory is now because it's just all <laughs> over my house. So that's good. There you go, progress. Yeah, yeah. we're making, it. we're getting. It. Exactly, Monique now knows these guys, but she knows them like as themselves. As personally, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, wait, no, 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 I don't think you understand, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Like, this guy did the Foley work for this. She goes, oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. I'm like, no, really? <laughs> you don't understand? Yeah. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. How do you how do you find or how do you pick your guests? What's your method? So I, uh, I have a big uh, Google Doc, right? Or as soon as I think of someone, right, from like a bonus feature or like I, I'm watching something or reading something. Sure. Um, I just write their name down, and then every week or two, I'll, I'll kind of go through and figure out if I can figure out information or reach out to them through a previous guest. Um, and so that's been really helpful now, right, where my guests are really come from recommendations from previous guests because they've had such a good time, and, and we've kind of – they see that I'm not a crazy person, which is, is uh, good. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so I mean, they didn't figure it out, but, you know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you wait till they're in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, really like, um, I've made like this huge list, you know, um, every single person that was ever in empire of dreams, or not even the scene, right? I'm like, okay, let's just get all those people. I flipped through, I have pretty much every star Wars insider and I kind of flipped through and I was like, okay, like every article that I read, like who were those people, you know? And, yeah. uh, and then, yeah. And then now it's been good where, uh, some partners and, and, uh, publishers that I've been able to work with a couple times. Uh, that know I'm not a crazy person and know that the people that listen to my show are pretty much the people that can be buying the making solo book or the art of books. You know what I mean? And so, sure. uh, so that's been super helpful as well to have that kind of support from, from outside the community. So 
So yeah. we're, uh, and then it's pretty much if I want to talk to someone and I know it's not going to be like uh, Natalie Portman level, yeah. then I, I can, I can figure out a way to, to reach out to them or to figure it out. So sure. Sure. Do you have, do you have a white whale? Oh, I have a, a few white whales. Yeah. Uh, ben Bird's at the top because Ben Bird's uh, impossible. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> uh, ben Bird's impossible. And I was able to, I met him for uh, like uh, 30 seconds uh, when I was in LA yeah. uh, in July for that. The concert thing. event, and I, I just like gushed for a while, and I was like, "Let me not like pitch my <laughs> podcast right now because I would just look like a tramble." So that hopefully that happens one day. Um, and I've always said if Marsha Lucas ever somehow came on the show, I would just like stop the show. Yeah. <laughs> like that would be, uh, and because I don't think that would ever happen. Like there's no way. Uh, yeah. Um, and, and then there's uh, other people because I of course I could see like Harrison Ford or George Lucas or whatever, but sure. like. I feel like uh, some of the other people, like Doug Chang, for instance, yeah. uh, Rob Coleman, I've really wanted for such a long time. Same. Um, people that really uh, impacted how I viewed special effects and how I watched those documentaries especially are, are big, a big deal to me. And then um, I've been trying to reach Ralph, uh, not Ralph McQuarrie, uh, Rick McCallum for uh, like every month for the past <laughs> year and a half. Because I found like a uh, an email address somewhere, and uh, so we'll see. Fingers crossed. She still has not responded, but I, I'll break them down eventually. I'll get there. There you go. I'm that the, would be. I'm the same way about Ahmed Best. Oh yeah, man. But but with I mean, it's you and Ahmed happen. Best, I, it, it's gonna happen. I think that one's gonna really happen. Yep, I think so too. He's gonna. He doesn't know it yet, but we're gonna be no. best friends. I think he kind of knows. I think he knows it a little bit. I think I think he knows it more than he knows that I <laughs> dress like George R. R. Binks as a uh, seven year old in 1999. Yeah. So. Uh, so I think you're in good shape. That's right. I think you're in good shape. Oh, it's going to happen. I'm going to wear him down. <laughs> okay. We we okay. know each other, and I'm like, you, like, let's just be best friends already. He's going to get it. Gonna I, it's going to happen. You're going to get it. Yeah, of course. You, you just how you got to frame it. You just got to frame it because, I mean, again, when someone has a book coming out or when someone has a tour going on or whatever it is, then that's really when I know that I can get someone that I might not be able to get to just on a, a regular basis. and. Really, when as soon as his one man show starts touring, oh, it's and on. he needs publicity for it, it's on. It's on uh, so fast. Yep. And then you'll you'll publish your interview, and then I'll I'll jump in. There you after go. You've had your interview. <laughs> yeah. So that, I'll know. put in a good word for you. Right. Exactly. With I'll let you have it for like a month or two, and yeah. then I'll. I'll uh, okay. With my Ahmed best friend. <laughs> it's gonna be great. Ahmed and Neil Scanlon are my two. Oh man! Oh, again, like you're saying, those are your two. You need you need bigger fish because not bigger fish, but people that you might not get because you're gonna definitely get those two. Like I I know it. So you you set yourself up better for those two than I've ever gotten a guest ever. So you're gonna be fine. you're gonna be just fine. Yeah, I mean, one way or another. All right, we're gonna figure this out. <laughs> they're, they're, they're my, the damn show. Yeah, yeah, they're my two that I've wanted for a really long time. I was like, that's after that, I can be like, all right, wait, let's coast. Somebody, yeah. is there someone that you know you couldn't have on your show? Like, not by accessibility, but like you probably couldn't be able to handle it because I have one. Let me see. I'm gonna pull up. I, I'm pulling up my Google Doc right now and seeing. Because here's the thing. Like, I. I was able to keep my cool with Lauren Peterson this summer at yeah, Celebration. Great and like, if I, if I, oh, that, I, that's probably the favorite one I've done. And that, and, and Tim Zahn too, like both yeah. of those, like I probably shouldn't have kept my cool. Like I probably <laughs> shouldn't have been able to handle that. Sure. Um, and so I can do those two. I feel like I can do anything. I probably, again, Harrison Ford would be tough just because he would be a tough interview, right? Yeah. Like, for he's sure. never he, like, especially talking about Star Wars and everything. Oh, yeah. Like, I'd have to really be like, just kind of super Jimmy Kimmel. Old. Yeah, <laughs> and just, yeah. Like, put him in a hot dog costume yep. and, um, but yeah, that that that's kind of my my thinking right now. Nothing too, nothing too crazy, but but yep. that's where I am. Well, who's who's yours? Who couldn't you handle? Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson. Oh yeah, I should have guessed. Yeah. I don't, I don't guess. He's yeah. the only one. I could have lunch with George Lucas. And right. I would handle that better than I would being in the same room as Liam Neeson. Yes. Uh, man, the Lucas would be so, so, in, and I, I feel like I can get it. Someday I could yeah. get it. Like I, especially with like my work right now and everything like that. Dude, and I, I think I could, I could try it like with the museum, I think would be yeah. the end. I would be how to do it. Uh, like publicity for the museum. Uh, yeah. But then I would just like throw up. <laughs> <So> <laughs> As long as you do it before and after, you're fine. Right. <laughs> we'll see it. Yeah. 
Exactly. I, you know, I can see that. I can see that. I just know that if, like, for George Lucas, at least I can be like, you know, thank you. I think you're the greatest artist of all time, blah, blah, blah. And then be like, reel it back, Brian. Uh, but I could at least get out, like, a thank you, right? Liam right. Neeson, I'd be like, what am I going to say to him? <laughs> right. Like, this is Zeus we're talking to right now. You're only going to talk about Cold Pursuit, and then you're going to exactly. get out there. Dude, have you seen Cold Pursuit? It's nuts. I have not seen Cold Pursuit. Is it? It, it is. I saw not. it on a POD. I should rent it. Dude, should rent it? Yes. Okay. It is not what you think at all. Okay, so, I'll give it a shot. I'm going to watch a Liam Neeson movie regardless. I don't care what right. it is. It's just a rule of thumb for me, obviously. But Cold Pursuit, you think it's going to be like, you know, this like kind of can't be action movie, right? Mm-hmm. It's so like ridiculous and like wonky, and it knows that it's being that way, so it leans into it. Oh, that's good. It makes it even better. Yeah. So it's not like something trying to be really serious and then it just doesn't work very well. Like it knows it's being ridiculous and it doesn't hide from it. It's pretty awesome. I think you're selling me on Cold Pursuit now. I'm just saying. <laughs> After this, because I was going to watch, I just watched Detective Pikachu finally. I when love I was on that play. movie. I thought it was good. I thought, I mean, because my buddy who loves Pikachu, uh, Pokemon, yeah. um, loves Pokemon. He has a, a Pikachu tattoo on his wrist and yeah, he was yeah. like, that movie sucked. And I, I was like, <laughs> And I was like, oh, this movie's going to suck, right? Like, I trust this guy. <laughs> and I watched it on the plane uh, on my way uh, in over the weekend. And, uh, and I was like, oh, this was cute. Like, yeah. you know, it was cool seeing the Pokemon in real life. And, you know, I thought it was kind of dumb at the end. But I was like, this is a pretty good movie. Like, I don't know. Like, I thought it was fun. So, yeah, I dug it. It was a good time. Yeah. So but maybe I watch uh, you, Cold Pursuit tonight. You should because it's so weird. It's right. and it starts right. out like dark and kind of like okay whatever we're gonna do this it's like typical Liam Neeson getting revenge but it's like the 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 way that they go about it is so ridiculous and it's just it was not at all what I was expecting so I'm excited yeah so you know tune in for that Liam Neeson still got tricks up his sleeves <laughs> love that guy but no I couldn't I couldn't talk to him I already know it. He's the only one. Hey. I'm fairly certain that I could talk to literally anyone else on the planet because I'm I'm good at it. Right. Like I'm I'm good at I've learned, I've had it before, but I've learned definitely through the show how to talk to people and connect with them on a human level. Yeah. But I'm like that man isn't human, so like what am I what am I gonna say? What are you gonna talk about? Yeah. Yeah, I'd be like I totally don't have 35 pieces of Qui Gon merch sitting around me right now. <laughs> if that's what you're wondering. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, remember that one Star Wars movie you were in twenty years ago? I might be obsessed with it. I don't know. Yes. Well, now now he'll have uh, the Obi Wan series to talk about as well. So no. hopefully, uh, I bet. there's no way. There's no way he's not. There's no way. Gotta he's be. Not. Gotta be right. That's well, why. Did I'm... he do the voice in Clone Wars? He, he did. Did he did yeah. do the voice? So that's good. The yeah. big big Qui Gon nose CG animated. Like they was like, let's just really give him a huge let's nose. Let's dive in. Let's get. Yeah. Let's get I'm a look at it. Yeah, like a two times a Brian Balance nose. And oh, I yeah? That. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they really give him a schnoz in that one. That's right. Biggest nose ever, Adrian Brody. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Next time you watch an Adrian Brody movie, you'll see Big Nose Brody. What's the last Adrian Brody movie? I, I, I remember him being in, um, what was that, uh, Movie 43 or whatever it was, right? Oh, Do you remember that? Yeah. Like, the sketch that was, like, terrible that, like, someone blackmailed all these, like, uh, high high power yeah. guys into <laughs> Hugh and Jackman then, was in uh, that, I think. Oh yeah, and so then, uh, and then I never saw Adrian Brody again, right? Or he was in uh, Predators, Predators, Predators. He was in Predators. Yeah, he was in Peaky Blinders. Right. He was great. Oh, Peaky, Peaky okay, he was in Peaky Blinders. And sorry, I, I want to clarify for the record because I'm looking at it now uh, on Google. The color CG. He looks fine. He looks like a good Qui Gon uh, as, as a, a computer generated character. Right. But the Clone Wars animated the the, the micro Tark- series. Yeah. Uh, huge nose. It's like uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> it is. It is a uh, wild. So uh, to clarify for the record for those listening, that's right. He can, uh, he can smell via the existence barriers with that. Right, nose. and it's like all the smoke around him while he's talking to young Anakin with the bull cut, and it's like uh, he was breathing all that in. Yeah, so. exactly. That's how he knew he was chosen one. He could smell it. He could smell <laughs> the medical chlorians on yeah. him. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Oh man. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't. Anybody else? But uh, he's the one. That's what. That's another reason I'm really excited to talk to Ahmed because Ahmed is the most interesting person ever, and yeah. we're so similar. So I, like a lot of the things that he likes and tweets about, I was like, dude, me too. So I'm like, <laughs> we're gonna be best friends. But also, what is it like being in the presence of Qui Gon Jinn? 
Because well, that's also a question for him because if you guys are so similar. Yeah. They spent, they, they spent so much time on set together, right? Him and Liam Neeson hanging out in Tunisia and all these bonus features, right? They're just blasting around. Uh, they love each other. That uh, means Liam Neeson might like you. You know what I mean? So that's something to think about. Something in the back of your mind to think about. You know? Look at this. See, this is the real reason I had you on. Right. Really <laughs> talk you up, Nick. Talk you up for yeah, well, yeah. Take, take, that. Decent, so. take that. Take that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, see? Uh, on the technical side of it, what yeah. is, what is your setup for Talking Bay 94 as far as recording and editing goes? How do you do it? It is it is uh very very minimal. So, uh, I'm doing it right now, Sweet. which is I'm uh, I I live in a studio apartment, so nothing nothing to write home about. I'm in the corner of the apartment and cool. I'm on the couch and I have a little TV tray, you know, stand and then i have my star wars tash and archives the Love big it. paul duncan book and i have my laptop on top top of it and then i have my blue yeti mic and a pop filter and headphones and that's it and then i just edit it profusely and audacity yeah. <laughs> and, uh and that's it man it's what i was trying to tell people is like the quality of a podcast can only only go up so much right before True. uh before it kind of tapers out and plateaus and then you're in a studio, right? Like, and you're True. really, and so, you know, especially for people that are just starting out, like really, I started a year and a half ago. Like you can do it with a mic and a computer. And as long as you put a little thought into how you edit it, like you're going to sound just as good as the daily or as NPR. And so you might as well just, just go for it. It's true. It's true. There are inexpensive ways to do it and get really good quality. Yeah. And I have all the equipment for a, a studio. Like I have all the uh, uh, soundproofing, and I have all. Uh, I bought a new mic and a new uh, stand and everything like that. But again, since I live in a studio apartment, I don't really have um, that space. much space. <laughs> but uh, but luckily, my new gig at Fangoria, we have a podcast studio. We have a podcast room. It's all soundproofed and it's pretty Good. looking, right? And it has all the equipment. And so uh, I've only had to do it. Twice, I think I've done it twice, like during my lunch break, where I've just kind of interviewed uh, in there, which was nice. So I wouldn't have to drive all the way home and set up and, and get it ready. But um, so that's kind of a thing that I really haven't done too much of yet. But but it's nice to know that I can stay late after work or something and just kind of have a studio there for me. So sure, there you yeah. go. That's when you know you've made it, Brandon. <laughs> right, exactly. Where I have a podcast studio at work. There you go. Man, I I'd say very very similar uh, in trying to keep it as simple as possible. I have a Audio Technica twenty one hundred. It's like a USB okay. cardioid mic that is connected to the laptop via USB cable, and then I use a program called Amalto, okay. which is what I use to record the Skype calls. It gets both ends. Oh, nice. I use Audio Hijack. Audio yeah. Hijack. Okay. Is that for is that Mac or Windows? It's. I have it on my Mac. But really? I'm sure it's anything. Yeah, Audio Hijack. Is it? Is there a subscription for it? Or is it free? I think I paid like 15 bucks for it when I first started because that's what someone recommended to me. It seemed like relatively easy, and uh, yeah, that's good. Really? You just buy it outright? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Because I've been looking. Because I I have I have a Mac as well, and yeah. then I have a Windows laptop that I record on because I couldn't find a good Mac. Oh computer. yeah, Audio Hijack then because Audio yeah, that would Hijack. Be... Audio Hijack. Interesting, and it connects through your Skype. Yeah. Connects through my Skype. I'm, I'm I'm recording this as a backup right now, just uh, just in case. Yeah, so I'm always interested in the processes because everyone you know has their own thing. Like with Savannah and I, we tried um, ZenCaster for a little while, mm -hmm. but then that like the audio kept getting lagged on like us, right. and then it ended up being like ten times more editing. So now Ugh. we yeah, so now we just we call each other on Skype. And then we record our own audio via Audacity, and then I drop yeah. it to her, and then or Google Drive it to her, and then she puts them together. Yeah, try Audio Hijack because, like, right now, what I'm getting is your stuff and my stuff, uh, and then I put it into Audacity, and it's two different um, audio files, and you just match it up very briefly, and then you're good to go. Wow, I know. Yeah, this so is great. We're just. Yeah, we're just swapping podcast tips. <laughs> yeah, everyone would love it. Everyone, everyone's like, fast forward, fast forward. Like, ah, okay, yep. Uh -huh. That's right, yeah. But guys, you know my show by now, all right? <laughs> You're not interested in anything. Anyway, uh, so, <laughs> I, I, so I did video production for a lot of years. And okay. I had a media company of my own and did wedding videography and I had a TV show and all that stuff. But I learned to edit on Adobe Premiere. Uh -huh. And it's the only thing I ever learned. 
So I actually edit my podcast in Adobe Premiere. Wow, and I, interesting. And I export the MP3. Okay, interesting. Yeah, which is definitely not the way you're supposed to do not it. Not the easiest way to do it, <laughs> but hey, you got that going for you. That's yeah. right. Almost, uh, well, actually, at this point, it will have been I either just about or just over 100 episodes. Yeah, man. I, I was just looking. I think it's like, uh, I mean, I don't know when mine will come on, but I'm looking now. and You can take it out of its dating the episode. I think it was like 96, and I was like, holy holy crap. Like, that's wild, man. Congrats. Dude, like, tell me about uh, it. Thank it's a, you. It's a slog. Like, you got to you gotta get through it, and you're, you're pounding it through, so congrats. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's uh, four years total as, yeah. of, as of recently. I've interviewed uh, – well, I say interview. It's not even an interview. I've talked to, you talk to people. <laughs> over 100 people. That's not Because I've had episodes that had multiple people. Right, right, right. I, I actually, so yeah, 96 is out right now. 97 will be out next week. Um, but at, as of the end of this week, I will have recorded up to 105. That's wild, man. Congrats. Yeah, I'm an idiot. <laughs> I came back from San Francisco like jazzed. I was like, okay, cool. Yeah. I'm back into it because I released an episode the week before. Came, yeah, came back and I was like, "Let's do this." Hit the road running and booked like eight shows this week. Love it, I love know. it. No, yeah. you got to, and then you're, but then you'll be done. Then you can just edit it once a week and not worry about it. You can kind of just be casual about emailing people and not like, "Hey, like, are you sure? Like, you can't do like this week, like this Tuesday? Yeah. Like, come on." <laughs> I'm definitely excited for the not hustle of the email circuit, right? Back and forth between agents and managers or the people directly, but at yeah. the same time, I'm me, so I'm like, "All right." How do I get all of these out at once? <laughs> because I had a month, I want to say it was June or so, last year, where I had 10 episodes banked. Wow, yeah. And I was like, okay, cool. But then I would be getting these like, guests, and then I'd be like, okay, cool. Um, So your episode will be out in two and a half months. And I was like, that's not going to work. So yeah. I doubled up. So I did two episodes a week for a, a bit oh man you blew through them. yeah for like a month and that's, that's the same wild. thing yeah. like we said before it's like you can't you don't want to over uh go for the schedule like it doesn't have to be once a week you can take weeks off you can do whatever you want that's the best part about podcasting like, just, yeah if you want to double up i'll double up if i'm not gonna do an episode for three weeks that's okay it'll be all right exactly quality or quantity exactly yeah I've never put out an episode where I've been like, I shouldn't have put that one out, you know, just because I wanted to get a Wednesday out, you know, so same. Uh, it's just important to to be proud of what you're doing, A, because, you know, we're doing this literally just for the love of doing it, right? And Absolutely. so uh, you might as well love what you're putting out. So, you know, yeah. at the end of the day, if someone tweets at me and like, how dare you not have a Wednesday episode <laughs> yeah. out? Like, A, I doubt, I doubt that ever happens, but B, like, um, you know, who cares? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do you have do you have a favorite episode you've put out so far? Um, I have a couple just because of the experience of recording them. Sure. Um, so the the Lauren Peterson one we've talked about yes. is definitely just kind of my favorite overall, right? Like I walked with him through the halls of celebration so to like cool. get to the podcast room and and then we kind of hung out for a while and I brought my space lug puppet that i bought at disney world and he just kind of like he just like played with it for like five minutes and just like told stories using the the space lug and like gave (laughs) to him at the end because he was like where'd you get this one just take this like you designed this like you can just have this you know yeah and and we went through his book page by page and it was it was incredible and it was someone that i've wanted to talk to for for years the first celebration i ever went to was celebration four i mean my uncle stood there and listened to him just tell stories to a group of people um and i was like i want to talk to him and so I'm so glad I was able to do that. Um, and then Timothy's on again, like that was my first like big interview. Yeah. Where it was at Comic Con, it was inside the Del Rey booth. I was like kind of out of my element, and it was like me and my favorite author growing up. They used to read underneath the desk at school, you know, and like just kind of talking for an hour, right? And yeah, uh, it was it was wild, and and uh, and so and then Star Wars leaks got a hold of that episode and. And went to town on it, and so it got like <laughs> it blew up, and so you know, like, um, but all of them have been just uh, so cool, just that they've been willing to talk to me, and that you know, I've been able to ask all the questions I wanted to ask. I've never really had a bad interview, yeah. Um, it, it, not in the sense of a bad episode, but a bad like interaction with somebody, sure. Um, which has been uh, super lucky, just in that sense, like no one's been a jerk or no one has been 
piss off about a question or anything like that. So, um, so yeah, I, I've, I've really just kind of enjoyed all of them, if that's a cop out answer. Yeah, I have the same answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is tough because everyone's so cool. You yeah. know, and it's like a lot of people, a lot of people I've found uh, don't necessarily believe it. You know, like there's yeah. no way. It's like, no, really, like these people are awesome and they're all so cool in their own ways. And but yeah, I th- I think you definitely have those ones where like the experience beyond the show adds this like extra glow around it. Like, I mean, dude, you gave Lauren Pearson a puppet. How cool is that? Yeah, right. Yeah. Like, what? That's so awesome. What What's your favorite part of the gig? Like doing this talking Bay ninety four, I like um, hearing from people after I, I put them out. Especially the the people that might not um, have as much publicity, right? Like Lauren Peterson. Obviously, people know who Lauren Peterson is. Timothy Zahn. People know who Timothy Zahn is. Sure. Uh, the smaller ones, though, and smaller in the sense that they haven't been as you know, touted around. I think my favorite interview, really, in terms of the quality that I kind of direct people to, especially people that might not love the behind the scenes of Star Wars, was uh, Matthew Reinhardt, which was also at Celebration. He yeah. signs the pop-up books for Star Wars. And it was just an hour of just like unbridled enthusiasm for Star Wars. And I was just like completely blown away. I didn't know what to expect. And, and it's kind of these like surprises of, you know, am I going to get someone that's enthusiastic about working on Star Wars? Am I going to get someone that's, you know, um, sad about working on Star Wars because of how they got gypped or how they got whatever – and um, I really do love being able to tell everyone's story and then hearing from, from the people that are listening, like on Twitter or um, via email or, or on iTunes or whatever it is. And that's really been really, really cool. Or Roku Depot, who always blows me away. Like, I'm like, this is, someone's listening to all of these, like, yeah. crazy. So, so yeah, uh, I really just kind of love hearing from people and, and love knowing that people have heard a story they might not have known. Sure, sure. When you started this... What was something that like that happened that you weren't expecting? The um, the the big thing because I had a couple friends that were doing podcasts and I was really leaning on them for advice about like what would I need to do. Like again, we were talking earlier like where I had experience with emceeing and kind of interviewing before, and I was like, what am I missing? And and they kind of were like, you're gonna mess up. You're gonna have an episode that gets deleted. Uh, you're gonna, you know, have an episode that doesn't go well, you know, you're gonna not have listeners at the beginning, right? And so I kind of setting me up for like, uh, expecting all of that. And, and one of my first in-person, uh, interviews was with, uh, Paul Blake, like Greedo. Yeah, oh yeah. And, uh, and I was super excited and it was a new manager that I hadn't really talked to yet. He hadn't really seen me work and the audio got like completely corrupted, just like completely oh. trashed. And so it was like unusable. And so I was trying, I was like, okay, like I really messed up this chance to work with this agent that brings in all these people. Like I would have an interview a, a month just from the sky. Um, and so I had to like transcribe it and just kind of put it out as an article and kind of like a, a bonus because it was just like unlistenable. And it was kind of just learning that like even that, the worst case scenario, right? Like really doesn't um, phase what I'm doing, right? And so, um, and just kind of learning from those experiences. And, and, and and then what was really great was those first few months of of kind of joining the Star Wars Twitter community that I was only kind of tangentially a part of, right? Just but kind of like reading Pablo Hidalgo's tweets, right? Yeah. And, uh, and then kind of seeing that there's all these people that are uh, really passionate about the movies and really passionate about what's happening and, and creating in their own rights. And uh, that's been super, super rewarding. Sure, sure. Isn't that weird that like everyone has those stories of like corrupted episodes and things have gone wrong? Oh yeah, man. Oh. It's a it's a nightmare. It's That's tough. why like I just have to like even like right now like I'm backing this up like just in case yeah. you know what I mean because yeah. it's like I, I know like that just like struggle right like and it's like and then like if like I've been interviewed before and the episode got corrupted right and the episode like didn't work and I was like yeah I'll re-record it like I'll just redo it you know because I know like that struggle and that panic right and like oh yeah it, it is uh it is just the yeah. ultimate nightmare having to go back and explain be like hey so listen that time that I'm sorry <laughs> yeah, that time that you like devoted uh some time out of your busy schedule and just kind of like listen to me blab for a while yeah we're gonna have to redo that or I can never talk to you again you know what I mean yep. so yep what do you use when you do in person? 
So yeah, in person, I have uh, the secret weapon of Talking Bay 94, which is Jason, my buddy, who now I have Pangoria as well. Beautiful. Um, and he is uh, my producer, especially when we were getting started, was really setting up the uh, Skype calls like in here and helping me kind of get the equipment all set up. But then uh, in person, he is so great about like he has a uh, portable audio recording equipment and he's able to kind of check levels. And then he you know takes the pictures and kind of makes sure that the guest is everything they need. Uh, and so that's really nice where I can just kind of focus on the interview itself and uh, and get through it. So I don't know the exact equipment that we use, but I did just buy a pocket uh, microphone just in case and I just keep it in my bag at all times in case I like sit next to Ben Burt on a plane or something like that right yeah, right yeah, well be smart so um but yeah so that's that's been kind of the plan with at least in-person interviews see what I mean more professional version of mine <laughs> <laughs> I use an h4n zoom okay and then I have two xlr mics attached actually that's, the same mic I'm talking to you great. now yeah, that's it, great. It works that's awesome. That's professional. I don't know what you're talking about. That's yeah. professional. That's, you know the name of your mic. I was just like, yeah, whatever. I mean, to be fair, I did just look up the model. It's the H, It's the Audio Technica 2100. I did not know that five minutes ago. I knew it was Audio Technica because it's written yep. on it. Yeah, that's all you need to know. That's right. But I know the H4n because they use it in uh, film production as well. So when you're shooting oh, cool. like indie movies and stuff, it's usually through an H4n. Uh, so that's I had that left over from my TV production days. And I've uh, nice. been using that. But it took me a while to learn how to use it. So I did an episode. I think I did two episodes, actually, because I did them back to back in a hotel lobby. It was in the first, probably within the first 10, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, and I had recorded via the mics on the top of the recorder as okay. opposed to the mics that we were holding. Oh, no. And it recorded everything in a hotel lobby, including the fountain we were sitting right next to. Oh, no. So that was fun. <laughs> there's nothing we can do. I mean, you can still hear us, but there's just, like, so much extra noise as well, and our voices are really low. I was like, well, I'm out. And then I had another one that was in person. We recorded it. It was, to this day, one of the best chats I've ever had. Like, mm -hmm. we got really deep, and we were talking about the stuff, and at one point she was, like, crying because it was, like, this emotional story, and it's great. And so I had thought I pressed record. Oh, no. <laughs> and instead, I accidentally pressed play. So when I looked at it, the numbers were moving. And so we got done. We were talking. It was like an hour and a half. It was a great show. And I looked down, and I pressed the record button, and the numbers kept going. And I was like, what is going on? And then I held it up to my ear, and it was playing a previous show that I'd done. Oh, no. Talk about problem. I mean, uh, she, was, she was great. She's a really good friend of mine, so that helped a lot. But, man, I was yeah. like, so sorry. So when she came, yeah. when she came uh. back on, I was like, Okay, so this is not the greatest podcast in the world. This is just a tribute. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, things you learn. Things you learn the hard way. So if you were going to give anyone advice that wanted to start their own podcast, having done media stuff as well as podcasting, what would yeah. be your advice? I would just say go for it. Yeah. Uh, and, and figure out first what differentiates you, right? There's uh, a lot of people out there that are – sitting around a mic and talking about Star Wars over a bit, right? And yep. there's a lot of people out there sitting around and talking about sports and talking about movies, right? Like, so it's like, yes, like you have that passion and yes, you, you have great uh, insight and ideas, um, but it's how do you turn that into something that is not only differentiating, but also that um, can complement the shows around you, right? Where I was able to come in and be talking Bay 94 without – uh, impacting, you know, your show and uh, impacting Black Series Rebels and uh, impacting Black Points, right? Where everyone right. contributes their own voice and we're all not just like stepping on each other's toes, right? Sure. And how do you, how do you, how do you become part of the community that you want to be in, whether it's you want to do a basketball podcast or you want to do a podcast about your favorite book series or you want to do a D and D podcast, right? How do you join a community and be a part of it and be a voice in there that is uniquely yours? Uh, I think is, is the most important part about podcasting, where if it's something that you'll be interested in listening to, then other people will want to as well. Um, and then really, like we, we've spent, what, 20 minutes talking about the audio equipment, but at the end of the day, like, <laughs> we, you might as well just be very passionate about what you're doing and, and make it sound relatively professional and edit the shit out of it. Yep. And uh, especially at the beginning, because yeah. 
uh, I'm, I'm sure I just stuttered my way through 20 episodes, but you'll have no idea because I took out every um from the 20 episodes. Uh, and, you know, that's it. And other than that, like, just keep doing it. Like, once you get past five episodes, you're in the home stretch, right? Like, it's the people that do one or two episodes that I'm like, yeah, like, that's the reason you stopped or that's the reason you didn't keep going. Uh, you just have to kind of push yourself and, 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 um, and keep going. Cause if you don't go viral after your first episode, like, you know, you got to figure out a way to, uh, to keep, uh, to keep going. Exactly. A lot of times you won't go viral ever. So you gotta, exactly. you, yeah. gotta you gotta like it. You gotta like right. it. I think that's great advice as well. It's like you, the thing that makes your show different is you. So find a way to where, like, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of Star Wars podcasts out there. Yes, they are. <laughs> you know? But when you talk, you know, Black Series Rebels, uh, Blast Points, you, Sky Talkers, like, they're all so different. Yeah. Yet we're all talking about the same thing. Okay. You know? So it's like, if you can find something that is you, that's that's the way to go. I totally agree. Exactly. Exactly. And you can make a podcast about anything. That's the best part. You, that's what's <laughs> awesome. And what's what's awesome too, and that's kind of always grinding at me now, which is you see now celebrities figuring out how easy podcasting can be, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> and you're seeing brands figure out how easy podcasting can be, right? But still, I will always gravitate towards the unique voices, whether they're coming from brands or celebrities or just regular people. Um, and that's what really is important about podcasting. And um yeah, that's, that's all I'll say. I mean, like with work with Fangoria, you know, I'm producing, we have, I think, seven podcasts out right now. We have a lot more in the works. Dude. Um, and it's all about uh, finding those unique voices in a community like horror that's very tapped. Like there's so many people that are so interesting and so uh, knowledgeable that it's like, how do you do a podcast that doesn't sound those shows, that doesn't try to recreate these shows that are doing so well, but also kind of give new insight and give a uh, new meaning to, to how we experience the things that we like. So totally agreed. It's such a fun time. Yeah, man. It's, Super cool. We're like right at the point where it's becoming everywhere. It's like cool now. And like you said, Conan O'Brien's on the bandwagon now. So that's fun. <laughs> it's a he saved podcast. And what was that article? It was like how Conan O'Brien reinvented podcast. Yeah. Wow. It was like, it's a like big thing movie. now. I was like, yeah, yeah, okay. what? <laughs> Like, it's been a lot of years. I mean, don't get me wrong. His show is hilarious. Yeah. He's like, all right, it's a medium. Been around for it. Who would have thought internet radio would be something that people would be into? Right. It's so funny. Oh, my God. Well, dude, we've been talking for an hour already. That's pretty good. That's well, pretty good. Dude, this was really fun. Yeah, man. I appreciate you you uh, inviting me on. You you invited me. You sent them my DMs, and you're like, hey, come on. And <laughs> I, I remember, like, looking through your guest list. I'm like, I don't know. Am I qualified to be on this damn show? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm glad you did. I really enjoyed it. It's been a long time coming. I'll have you know, uh, like forever ago. I was like, I need to have Brandon on, and then I yeah. like, have the memory of an Alzheimer's patient, so I just kept forgetting. And then I was That's... like, Wait, hold on a second. Yeah. Long time coming because we're, we're so similar, and I love your show. And I was like, I need to tell him on the record <laughs> <laughs> over and over again, and we're until I get embarrassed. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, well, I, the, I mean. I was glad that we were able to. We met in person in Chicago, which was great. We did after the was, was that Mandalorian panel. Yes, which I got yeah. into because of you. Right, because I saw you tweet it, and I was like, I have an extra ticket. Let me just DM it to him. Yeah, and you really awesome. get him. Yeah, which was the, that was my favorite panel of the entire. Oh, week. same. Like it just it was just awesome. It was just same. awesome. Same. We actually saw the footage of stuff that nobody I know, else had right? seen. <laughs> and everyone else was complaining. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, Sorry, I'm sorry. Like, cause when IG11 or whatever popped up, I'm, okay, here we go. This is my show, you know. Yep. So, yep. Uh, and then we ran out into a blizzard together, which was good. We did. And, uh, and then that was it. That was the origin story. That's that was right. the first crossover. That was when we bonded. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Before I forget, uh, yep. where can people find you and the show online? Yeah. Um, Follow uh, Talking Bay 94, especially on Twitter, just at Talking Bay 94. Mm -hmm. And then we're, of course, on iTunes and Spotify and, and everywhere. And then my personal, which is not as fun as the Talking <laughs> Twitter, um, is at actually Brandon, because there's a lot of Brandon impersonators out there. And so you just got to be careful That's of true. what's going on. Um, but yeah, other than that, um, follow Fangoria everywhere, right? On the, yeah, congrats on that, by the yeah, way. Thank you. Um, so that's been really awesome. 
Um, and then, yeah, I do, uh, I help produce all the podcasts over there, which is super great. And um, we have uh, our vanguard of the vault. Her name is Natasha. And she is, uh, she's pretty much just killing it on every single podcast. And she does pretty much a Talking Bay 94 um, that I help her with a little bit, but she, she does pretty much it all. Um, but for, for horror and does like four episode miniseries uh, based on, um, the movies that came out 20 years ago and 30 years ago, or 30 years ago and 40 years ago, or something like that. And so we've been doing Alien, and then we've been jumping to Leviathan, and it's just kind of been all over the place, and it's been really, really cool. Dude, that sounds awesome. Yeah. Right on. Uh, cool stuff. A lot of cool stuff, and a lot of cool stuff in the works. But, uh, man, Brian, I appreciate you having me on. Of course, anytime. And... <laughs> Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at BrianBalance.com. That's balance with two L's. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps. Let them know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get you some sweet gear. Also, I made a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the show and get access to other exclusive shows about a bunch of random things, you can now do that at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, Logan, Victor, JC, and Christina. Your support means so much to me, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.